In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a neat final map, something that you might include in a report or in a presentation. This is the map we will create. We will first clean up our map in Google Earth, export it as a photo, and then import that photo into a Word document where I will show you how to create this final map. All right, so here's the habitat map that we have been working on and we're getting ready to, um, basically we're going to be exporting a photo um, that we can then import into either a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation to create a final map. And so before we do that, we're gonna clean this map up a little bit. One of the first things that we want to do here before we forget is we want to get the acreages from all of our habitat polygons. So we'll start with the field and again we'll right click the field, come to properties, come to measurements, and that's 21.8 acres. And I'm going to go ahead and save that in the description, 21.8 acres. And I'll do that for each of the other habitat types. Our next step is to make the boundaries of the polygons all the same color. So right click properties and we'll come to style and color. I guess we'll keep the, we'll make them all yellow. So the field will stay the same. The pond will turn to yellow, style and color, yellow. The next thing that we want to do is we want to zoom in just to make sure uh, that there's no overlap um, on the polygon edges and most importantly here for me is making sure that um, the trail um, is clearly separate and easily to distinguish from the habitat edges. So to do this I will often scroll out or zoom in to the um, approximate view um, extent that I'm going to be exporting this my map. Um, and so I like to have this as large as possible just so we can show as much detail as we possibly can within our map, but making sure that things still fit. And so I'll double check here. We're going to be exporting a photo. So I just want to come over here to the save image just to see what this looks like. And this all fits pretty well in the screen. So I think this is the approximate extent that I will be using. And so I'm just double checking that there's no terrible um, gaps that's been created between the habitats. And so the habitats look fine. I just wanna provide a little bit of space between my trail and my edges of my field and pond. So to edit that, I need to close out of this print view. I will actually zoom in just a little bit. And so I want to edit. This is the uh, main trail path. And so to do that, I'm going to come over to the main trail and click property so I can edit this. I'm just going to pull this away, keeping it on the trail, but pulling it away a little bit. Here's an art. This will be our an artistic rendering of uh, this habitat. Again, here you can see uh, the fact that I put this trail in by going click, release, click, release, click, release, rather than holding my mouse down makes it so much easier to come back um, at this point at a later date to make this edit. So I only have a limited number of points that I need to move um, rather than hundreds that would be in here if I had held the mouse down. So this trail is actually pretty close, pretty accurate. But I can see that my field, I messed up my field a little bit. So that's good. So I'm going to go in and, and just edit the edge of this field a little bit so the field is a little bit more accurate. Okay, Come to my field, properties, and I'll zoom in to do this. This is actually a ditch here where the field, main field stops. So I'm gonna edit this to that ditch. And we'll just double check. That should be fine. The next thing to do is 
um, is we want to remove any icons and labels that we don't want permanently attached to this photo. Again, we are going to be exporting a photo. So anything we see on the screen um, when we um, come to the print view is going to be included on the photo that we export. and We won't be able to do anything about it. And so I am going to shut off. I don't need the cool shrub on my final map. I'm going to just, I'm going to shut that off. And I am, when I import this into a Word document, I will add labels in the Word document so I can fully control where they are and what they look like. And so I'm going to go ahead and shut off all. I'm going to shut off my park here, place mark and label. And then I'm going to shut off the labels um, for the pond, uh, for the field, and for the conifer stand. So here we have a very basic looking map right now and that's pretty much what we want this is would be considered to be a base map so the next thing we want to do is export the most recent leaf on photo and so that's this one from october uh, 2020 so we're going to come here to save image again i don't want a title here i don't want a legend all i want is my scale bar and uh, the north arrow I will probably trim part of this photo when it comes into Word, and so I want to um, be sure I give my enough, myself enough space to trim that photo. I am fine with uh, having my units in feet. If I, let's say I wanted to have my units on my scale bar in meters, the way that I would do that is I would come up to Tools, Options, 3D View, and then the units of measurement, you could change to meters and kilometers. I'm gonna keep minus feet, just click okay. Okay, so this photo is ready to export. Um, before I do that, I just wanna double check the date. This was 10, 10, 2020. I'll come up here to save image. I'll click save image. And then I wanna save this as Bellamy leaf on 10, 10, 2020 and I'll click Save. And without doing anything else, uh, I want to. I don't want to change, move the map at all. I want to keep it exactly where it is, but I want to also print uh, my map over a leaf off photo. So to do that, I'll click this X. I'll come to the historical imagery, come back to the most recent leaf off photo, which is 427.16. I'll come to print image, and save image. And this will be the Bellamy leaf off for 2716. All right, with our photos exported, we will now go ahead and close Google Earth and we'll open up a blank Word document. I just hold down the return key until it creates another page. This just makes adding and editing elements easier. I'm going to then first change the margins of these pages. So I'm going to go to layout and margins, and I'm going to make them narrow with a 0.5 inches all the way around. This will give me the most area to work with, most printable area to work with on each page. All right, then next I'm going to come to insert <clears throat> picture from this device, and I'll import the first photo. I'll import my leaf on photo first. When I'm making a map, I want the photo to be as large as possible on the page so I can see it very well. I'm going to do an initial crop on this photo. Cut off some of the edges without losing any important information. This is why I like to put the scale bar up away from the very edges. I think that's as much as I can go. So based on this layout, um, I think that it would be most appropriate to turn the orientation of the page from portrait into landscape. So we'll come to layout, orientation, and go landscape. This will allow me to make a much bigger, my photo a lot larger. And I'll go ahead and center it. I'll pull these right out to the edges of the margins as far as I can go to make this as big as possible on this page. 
So now everything else that I put onto this page is going to be done primarily with text boxes. And one of the first things that I want to do is add a title. So I'm going to come over here and come to uh, insert text box and just a simple text box. So I'm going to grab this and drop it over here and I will give this a title. I'll just say habitat study area. and trail for the Bellamy River WMA. This is in Dover, New Hampshire. So now I can format this text box however I like. First is I'm going to center all my text in it to come up here and center it. I'm going to change the uh, size of the text. Again, while this text box is is selected. I can come up here and change the text size. I will bold this. Make this a little smaller. this a bit. I can change the size of the line around the box. I'll just come to format shape. I'll come over here to line. If it's a solid line. I'll just increase the width. That looks okay. The next thing that I want to do is I need to add labels to my habitats. And again, similarly, I'll do that with a text box. Insert text box. And here I will say, I'll first say field. So I'm going to make this text box transparent. I'll again right click and say format shape. So I come to the edge of the text box. I right click and say format shape. Um, I don't want my text box filled and I don't want there to be a line. So now the text box itself is invisible. So now I need to change uh, the font so it will actually show up. So um, I click on the text box, come over to home. I can make that the text white. I can increase its size. And as a rule of thumb, we want to try to have all of the labels um, as uniform as possible. And so I sh probably should have done this in my pond first because that's a smaller area to fit a label. And again, to make a neat map, we really don't want the labels overlapping on the edges of the polygons. So I'm just going to call this pond. I'm going to reduce the size of this font. I can also use my up, down, left, right arrows to fit that best. There, right click and copy this and hit paste. And I, I want to paste with keep source formatting, not as a picture. If I paste it as a picture, I won't be able to edit it. So paste that gets dropped up here. I'll come down, actually, I'll center that. I'll call this conifer. And again, paste. We could name our trails similarly, so I will right click and paste. This is the main trail. For this, I can use an arrow, so I can insert a shape. I can insert an arrow. I can change the color of the arrow by right clicking on it and say format shape. I wanted a solid line to be white. I can change the thickness. And one thing as you're laying in text on your map, be sure that the text is positioned in areas where it's easy to see. We'll label the spur trail. So again, I'm just going to paste my text box again. And then I'll add another arrow. 
trying to make everything as uniform as possible. And then we need to mark the parking lot. We'll say park here. Nice, neat, and clean. Now, if I were to move this map, um, everything is off kilter. So let's undo that. So when, once I start getting things kind of put in the place where I want them, I don't want them to be able to move around. So I want to basically group all of these elements together. So uh, the map is selected. I'm going to click my shift button and then click on all of these other elements together until they're all highlighted. So again, I'm holding my shift key down and then clicking on all of these elements. And now I'm going to right click and come down to group, and group. Now I can move this map and it all moves together. The next thing that I need to do is put in a simple legend for the habitats. So again, I'm going to insert another text box. Legend doesn't need to be so large. This is large font. We'll say habitat legend. We'll say conifer field pond. And now we'll go back. We'll go back to Google Earth to, to grab the acreages of these habitats. And again, this is why I like to put them in the descript the acreages in the description boxes because they're easy to come back and grab. The conifers was 3.1 acres. 1 acres, the field 21.8, and the pond was 1.4 acres. 1.4 acres. All right, so we can clean this up a little bit. Habitat legend titled bold. We'll increase the size of the line um, around that text box by right clicking and coming down to format shape. We want the fill to be there so we can read it. Um, and we want there to be a solid line. We just want the line to be a little thicker. If you decide that you want to change the position of something, um, for example, I'd like to, I'm going to actually put the main trail um, label up here to get it out of the way so it's a little bit better spaced. We're just going to click here and say, uh, and click on one of these elements that are grouped and right click and come up and say ungroup. It will ungroup all of them. I'll drag this back up here. All right, and then the last thing that we need to add in here um, are some map notes that indicate who made the map and when, and also to give credit. Um, to uh, Google Earth and what is the photo date. So again, to do that, I am just going to insert another text box. Map created March 2021 by Matt Tarr. You should include the map maker's name and affiliation if appropriate. We will give the date of the photo. This is an October 2020 Google Earth photo. And then we always like to just put in some words here that says this is not a survey format shape i'm going to take away the line so i'm going to go actually go ahead and move my legend down here again you can you can be as artistic as you want um, artistry is great uh, you just want really the key is to make your map as easy uh, to read and as accurate as possible and here is our final map